A few days ago, we made a video about the Peachtree GAN1 power DAC slash amplifier that uses GAN FETs in its output stage. And because of that, I asked, is this the future of hi-fi amplifiers? And Gab in the comments section, I've got it on my laptop here. He just said, this is the most confusingly interested I've ever been. This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, this is another Dear John video where we dive into some of the comment responses that you left underneath that peach tree video a few days ago. I'm very happy with the response actually because that video did extremely well, like well over 70,000 views in the first couple of days. That's excellent. So thank you ever so much to everybody who watched that video. The next comment comes from Bruce Adamson and he writes, Nice option for the tidy freaks amongst us. Keep leaving us a moo. I think he was referring to the moo sound that I put over, yeah, over swear words. I couldn't bleep out the swear word at the end and sometimes I use just animal sounds, whatever. Anyway, he writes cracking stuff. Yeah, I think that's one of the joys of the Blue Sound node feeding the Peachtree GAN1 is it's just a super clean, minimal setup. I thoroughly agree. And then Matthew Hilty writes, this would be very cool with a minimalist streamer like a Raspberry Pi variant or a Win Pro with a Rune server. And yes, he's right. But the reason I chose the node over the Win Pro or any other kind of streamer is the node has a subwoofer output. And to me, that's really important so that when I'm running stand mounts, I'm not locked out of adding a subwoofer because the node will send a variable signal out of its subwoofer output and then the rest of the digital signal comes out of the coax socket into the GAN1 and then that amplifies the speakers. So for me, that's the best of both worlds. But King Godzilla writes, absolutely. When you pair the Peachtree GAN1 with the Mini DSP SHD Studio, you will have the benefit of both worlds as I did. Well, yes, kind of. The SHD Studio from Mini DSP builds in Dirac Live room correction. So yeah, in one way you could consider that you've got the best of both worlds, but what that SHD Studio does not have is a subwoofer output. So you trade that in to get Dirac. Of course, it wouldn't be a hi-fi video on YouTube without triggering the grumps. And they came out in force actually. So we've got one here, Mike6475GA writes, hope not, coax only input, good luck with that. And then Jag writes, the mere fact that it's a separate power amplifier makes it not the future of anything, in my opinion. You know, <laughs> okay, fair enough. And then a little bit less grumpy, Yaniv writes, the future of pre-amplifiers is the past, tubes. The problem with a single digital input amp is that you can't hook it to a tube preamp or any standard solid state preamplifier. And yes, that's true, but that's not really the point of this GAN1. It needs a variable digital signal. And that variable digital signal, I think, is one of the key advantages of the node with the GAN1. Because normally you'd have to choose the node and then you might not be entirely happy with the DAC or you might be worried that the DAC doesn't sound all that good. So you're going to connect it to an external DAC or a DAC in an integrated amp or a DAC in a preamp and then that goes out to the power amp or the power amp is inside the integrated. But either way, in a traditional sort of more analog staged separates or slightly separate pseudo separate system, you're gonna to have to fuss at some point about the quality of your DAC. At least that's what I see out there on the internet. At some point when people start streaming, they start to ask the question, well, what DAC would sound better than the DAC that I've got in my node or equivalent streamer? And the GAN1 removes that question and that anxiety from the table because it effectively kind of sort of is the DA converter. And then we have somebody with a dad joking username, Artie Farty. 
He writes, I like my audio natural, pure analog, simple and organic. This is way too artificial, manipulated AI sound, not my taste. Now, yeah, sure, it might not be your taste, manipulated AI sound. No, AI has nothing to do with the GAN1. There's no AI in the GAN1 at all. This to me sounds like a bit of a grumpy dad who's kind of pulled some modern terms from the computer discussion or the computer conversation online and decided that they apply to digital audio, which he clearly doesn't like or isn't to his taste. Now that's fine if you're an all analog person and if you're an all analog person, then this amplifier, the GAN1, really doesn't speak to you at all. I totally get that. But really for me, what excites me about this particular type of amplifier is that it uses GANFET, which I think in the long run, I'm guessing here, but I think in the long run will prove to be a better switching output device for this kind of amplifier. And what I like about the GAN1 is, as I've just said, you don't need to worry about your DAC. Maintaining the analog connection, David Spendlove writes, no good for turntable users then. Well, actually not true, because before I shot my video and before I shot the B-roll, I had the Cambridge Audio Alva TT2 turntable hooked up to the Blue Sound node. Remember in my video, in my GAN1 video, I said that the node gives us digitization of analog inputs. I think that's where I put the little blooper in the middle because I stuffed it up the first time. So I took line level out of the Cambridge Audio turntable. You could come out of a phono stage if you've got separate phono stage and turntable. And then using the three and a half mil socket on the back of the node, fed the turntable signal into the node. Yes, that turntable signal will be digitized upon entry, but it will be inside any amplifier that does any kind of DSP processing that might involve say bass management or room correction, or in this case, the need to output SPDIF into a power DAC slash amplifier. So you can run a turntable with the node and the GAN1, I've done it. I had no complaints about it. I think one person did ask me like, what did I think about the digitization inside the node? But the thing is you can't bypass it. So I can't really tell you how good or bad it is, but generally, as I've said in videos past, I think it does take away a little bit and maybe that little bit is just in my head, but I think it really does, the digitization process does remove some signal quality with respect to analog, that is. But most of it, I think, most of the objections come from, I guess, here, inside, inside here, right? Inside our guts, inside our stomachs, inside our hearts, where we're objecting emotionally rather than being completely rational. Because as I've said again in videos past, I think ADCs do maybe they might shave like one or two percent off the top again I'm guessing I, I don't know for sure but there isn't a dramatic difference between going analog out of a turntable into an amplifier like the NAD M10 V2 for example which does digitize input as well and then coming out into speakers and then going into a let's call it an all analog integrated amplifier so like I don't know what kind of or let's say let's talk about what well, I'm talking about Peachtree a, a year or so ago I did a video about their preamp and their GAN 400 power amp which also uses GAN feds I guess it's you'd hear more differences from the amplifier going from the NAD M10 V2 to the GAN 400 and it's matching pre then you would have to worry about the digitization taking away the analog input of the NAD M10 V2. And of course, as I've said many times before, I can't stop laboring this point, I'm sorry. The benefit of digitizing a signal is we get room correction, which gives us far more in return than the digitization of a precious analog signal will take away. That's the key message really. Even if the digitization at the input of the blue sound node does remove a little bit of sound quality from your turntable's output. The, the base management and being able to run a subwoofer as well will give you much more in return. And I think also the signal into the GANFET amplifier will also give you a different flavor. So pretty much in all cases, we win 
more than we lose. But you can't tell purists that. I can't even tell the purist inside me that. So I guess, once again, this node and the GAN one is really a pragmatist's choice. Right, let's move to a far more informative comment that tells us something that I didn't know and I bet you didn't know either. It's quite a long one, so stick with me. It comes from a chap called Thomas Elliott, and he writes, the Welsh Canadian John Roberts, who founded GAN Systems, the company that makes GANFET for Peachtree, was an audiophile at heart. He founded SIG semiconductors essentially because he was looking for better wireless speakers. And in 2008, he founded GAN Systems because he thought that gallium nitride transistors, GANFETs, would make for a better audio amplifier. In your FutureFi series, I think it is inevitable that you will see more GANFET based amplifiers. I agree. Given that GANFETs are or will be shortly cheaper, more powerful, more efficient, and have such a higher switching speed, that most applications for these transistors are still in development. They are an ideal transistor for powered speaker topologies. So, yeah, I guess we'll see maybe a GANFET powered active speaker sooner or later. This Peachtree amp is the kind of product, even if it isn't perfect, that has me looking forward to the future of hi-fi. And I guess that really nails my sentiments exactly with a, a better background than I gave in my video. I guess I wanted to talk about the Peachtree amps that I've used in the past. But our final comment for the day is kind of connected to what Thomas Elliott just told us, in that it comes from a chap called Capuchidu, Capuchidu, Capuchidu. And he writes, I'll do you one better. Get a hold of a Technics SU G700 M2 integrated, which came way before the Peachtree and does all the same things. I actually think it does a little bit more. Absolute Sound called it a taste of the ultra high end at one tenth the cost. Here comes the kicker. I've had mine since it came out and will not part with it unless until I can afford the Technics SU R1000. It's that good. The Peachtree has plenty more power, 200 watts, versus the Technics' 70 watts, but the sound of the Technics is sublime, and they did it first. Well, I don't think it really matters who necessarily did it first. I don't think at the end of it all, people are going to be tallying, well, who came first with the Ganfet power DAC amplifier or Ganfet amplifier? Ultimately, no one really cares. What we care about is the sound quality that it gives us and the, the feature set and the flexibility that it gives us and also, yeah, the minimalism of our hi-fi systems that it provides. Now, I know that Capuch I can't say it, Capuchadu is talking about something that he owns. And that's why I said that's the kicker because a lot of commenters tend to want to big up the thing that they own. So when they want to recommend something, you know it's coming eventually that they own it. And I think there's, a, maybe I'm being a bit uncharitable here, but I think there's a bit of a, an egotistical connection here. I think one of the real skills in being able to talk about hi-fi is to be able to talk about things that you don't own, that you probably would never would own, but you still think that they would be of interest to other people. And I also realize that I'm in a privileged position. I get to play with lots of gear and maybe individuals don't. But I know many of you churn through loads of gear. You use lots of things, right? And I guess Capuchadu is using a Technics Ganfet amplifier right now. I think it sells for about 3,000 US dollars or 3,000 euros. The great thing about the Technics is it has massive VU meters on the front. So I think that might be the next GANFET amplifier that I look at. But my connections with Panasonic Deutschland, who look after Technics in Germany, are a little bit patchy since my contact, who I used to know there, went to work for Burmester. So I need to establish a new contact with Panasonic Deutschland. But yeah, when I go to Munich High End Audio Show next month, I need to go and visit Panasonic Germany to yeah make a connection, put in a request for a review sample. But I'll also add this, right? And this is something that's, um, I guess, come up recently, is that I don't really say yes to many review requests. As in, when a manufacturer writes to me and says, hey, John, will you make a video about this thing? Nine times out of 10, I say no. 
because I simply do not have the time. And I'd love to, I would love to do way more. But the flip side of that coin is that if I do find something that I want to review and the manufacturer hasn't asked me, I have to ask the manufacturer. And sometimes the manufacturer says no, because they don't think that I'm a good fit for their particular product. You know, that maybe their brand values or their image doesn't align with mine. And I fully respect that. I'm not gonna make a big song and dance about it. I'm not gonna just think that they are up themselves because they're not, it's their product. They can do what they like with it, especially when it comes to sending out a review sample. So I don't mind if manufacturers say no. I don't mind if Technics say no to me in making a video about their 3000 euro Ganfet amps with the VU meters. I'll just move on to something else because as you can probably tell, there is a lot of demand for essentially what I do. So I hope that gives you a sort of a broader overview of where I'm at right now. I mean, I guess if I did everything that I was asked to do, I would be making what? Maybe a hundred videos a year, but I just can't do that. It takes me hours to make these videos, especially the side-by-side -side comparisons. In every video, I do my damnedest to make sure that I've got something there at the same time next to the product that I'm reviewing, as I did with the GAN1, I had the NAD M10 V2, and what else did I have? The power node, that's right, the power node and the power node edge. So I had those things right there at the same time. So I'm not having to rely on fallible audio memory. I just, I can't trust myself with that respect. So that's why my videos take longer, but I'm very big on having stuff to compare to the product in question. So if I get the Technics, <laughs> I'm only making a meal of this, aren't I? Get the Technics, Ganfet amplifier, I'm gonna to have to find something at roughly three grand that I think I could use as an AB comparison. So I've got some videos coming up about when it started life as a CD player video, but then the manufacturer said, can we send you our amplifier as well? I'm like, okay. And then another manufacturer sending me an amplifier and I said, look, can you send me your CD player? So now I've got a situation where I've got a CD player and an amp and I could compare it to another CD player and an amp at roughly the same price point. They're expensive, they're high-end things. But that for me is really valuable because it means I can tell you something about what I heard about this thing and about this thing and how they compare. Anyway, I've got to draw this video to a close because I'm, I'm rambling. I think my coffee is kicking in again. I've had four coffees this morning. That's three too many for what I'm normally drinking these days because I was on a bit of a decaf health kick a while back. Yeah, this one is really buzzing in my head. So I'm going to sign off and say, I hope you found this video interesting or informative or a bit of both. If you did, please give us a like down below. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.